Welcome to Sacrifice to Success Podcast. My name is David Weaver, and I am the owner of The Forgotten Heart Project. My mission is to help others create freedom in every aspect of their life. In this season of the podcast, we are talking life, business, and what makes you feel alive. We are speaking with business owners and entrepreneurs from all over, hearing about the sacrifices, the learnings, the twists, the turns, the ups and downs, and the successes that they have had in life and business. These are their stories. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sacrifice to Success. Today, I have with me my guest, Richard Blanks. Welcome, Richard. Hey, it's great to be here, David. I'm very happy to be with you and your audience today. Sacrifice to Success is a great show. As I told you before, not only is it very entertaining, but inspired me enough to reach out for you. So I'm really, really happy to be with you and sharing some ideas today. Very cool. Okay. So let's start with uh, where we usually start, which is a little bit about yourself. And what, what's cool and unique about Richard today is that he is out of the country. So tell us where you are and what you're up to. I am in sunny Costa Rica. I'm north of Panama, south of Nicaragua. I'm smack dab right in Central America. I'm about 3,000 miles away from my mother, but it's close enough still to visit. (laughs) I've been here for 21 years. I moved to Costa Rica when I was 27 years old. And what it has been is a lot of twists and turns. No one really decides immediately to be an expatriate or to start a company abroad. It kind of built momentum going as far back, David, as my high school days, because when I was in Northeast Philadelphia at Abington High School, when we were graduating in 1991, a lot of my friends were, they had plans. They were going to Ivy League. They were studying law and medicine and architecture. And I myself, I wasn't really sure what to do. And Mm -hmm. so my school encouraged me to double down on my favorite class, which was Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to the University of Arizona and study Spanish and communication like yourself, David, studying public speaking and rhetoric. And a special sauce for me was nonverbal communication, micro expression Mm. reading. So at least what I tried to do, my friend, was to make myself marketable post-grad. So if anything, I could be the only one that could translate for my friends or for any sort of business. And little did I know that a few years later, I was given an opportunity to come to Costa Rica just for a couple months to work at a friend's call center. And when I came here, and like anybody else that steps off a plane and they're in paradise, they don't want to go home. They are home. And so that's kind of where my second half of my life adventure really began. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I can I can relate. So we went to to Maui for the first time ever. Hadn't been to any of the islands uh, last year. Cool. And it's so interesting how. I don't know why we're, and maybe some people are, I do know some people that don't like tropical areas, but I'm definitely, you know, you think about it fairly often, like, "Mm, how am I going to get back there and spend some more time in that environment? Because it's just so amazing. What's it's cool too, because you kept an open mind. You went to something so different than what you and I are expecting and our values, our customs and things that we might hold to be important really have no value when you go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's the essence of the person or showing the fact that you're incorporating their culture and their customs. So that, my friend, is more of an experience than just bringing your phone, your movies, or your suitcase full of your home with you. You should almost be bringing a second suitcase so you can bring back with you all these experiences so it can change your life. Yeah. That's so okay. Yeah, we could go deep into that, but um, <laughs> I'll try to keep us focused on your story. We can do that for another um, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so you go, you go visit, uh, you're, and you work at your friend's call center, and and then what happens? How did you now get to the position that you are now? So tell people what you are doing now. Yeah, that's how that come about. Question. A lot of the times, people will have that certain spark or or that initiative, and mine happened a little bit later in life. I started my business at 35. It doesn't mean that I wasn't capable earlier, but if I may be forthright, there is something called impulse control and maturity and experience. Mm-hmm. And maybe I learned a little bit later in life, but it, you know, better late than never. So I'm at my friend's call center, and I was supposed to be there for two months, and two months turned into four years. Mm-hmm. Why? Because A, I was in my mid-20s and I'm with people in the early to mid-20s and they're, they're bilingual, they're post-grad, they're speaking on the phone and they're brilliant. 
I mean, this is not their native tongue and they're still showing some sort of cognitive skills and intense concentration and, and just being some really top professionals where they're earning some of the best money in the country. I knew that day, I, I almost shed a skin that day. I was in an environment where it felt very natural for me because I'm a speaker, but I also like the sort of engagement with the client. I like this sort of back and forth and the rebuttals and I like converting calls sight unseen. And after four years of, let's say, learning the business and having the best time of my life in Costa Rica and saving some money, I realized that I could enhance the experience for the agent, for the client. And I also realized I had enough savings to where I could begin to start a company. And I also knew that there's a certain time in life where your hour could be gauged differently. There's a larger rate of return. Mm -hmm. I was willing to throw my hat in the ring. I, I knew it was time. And so instead of building out a huge call center and overextending myself and taking loans, no, no, no. I was renting initially a seat from a blended center. So I'm almost like in an internet cafe, just an enhanced one. And once I started reaching a couple dozen seats, it, it wasn't cost effective for me. So I was able to rent space for about 150 seats and build out that center. And then after about six years of saving money and having established clients, I took the biggest leap and I built myself a three floor building to house 300 agents. Nice. And so just like Richard Dreyfuss's movie, I was letting it ride. I kept <laughs> betting on myself and tripling down. And, and why not? I mean, you could be a little, they don't say it's crazy in life, but you could be swept up in some sort of amazing energy momentum. You get these sort of chills that where the winds guide you. And as long as your intentions are honorable, Dave, and as long as you're doing things with good faith, by all means, try something. Because when you succeed, it's amazing the sort of return that you get on that and the fulfillment. But even if you fail and you fail spectacularly, you can still look in the mirror and respect yourself for trying. So at that coming of age in my life where I've had many stages, at 35 years old, I realized that I was about to enter a very serious stage and I, and I was going to take it a certain way where I was going to, as John Wayne says, die with my boots on. I was not going to fail that. Yeah. Nice. I love it. Well, and you, you have this certain energy about you too, that ha have you always been that way or ha has this been something that you've cultivated? I've always been relentlessly positive, David. I always woke up with a smile on my face and all of my friends will say when I'm not around that I'm just a great guy and they'll tell really funny stories about fun <laughs> times together. I, I knew this though, that success is built on a million thank yous. And if you can encourage somebody and guide somebody to be better, it comes back not just in friendship or even referrals, just in feeling good about yourself. And a lot of the times growing up, there are naysayers and gray believers out there. I, I was given predisposition opinions and, and my future should have been organized for me. But sometimes black sheeps are dreamers and, and they feel alone. And for me, I knew that I wasn't able to live a fulfilled life and I wouldn't have been true to myself unless I followed studying second languages and going to certain universities. And, and so by, let's say, being a little selfish, David, just a little bit, I've been able to live the most beautiful life because obviously I had a destiny. I mean, when you're 10 years old, you don't want to start a call center. You don't even know what one is. Yeah. But I knew that I was built for something a little bit different than the nine to five grind. Now, mind you this, don't think I sit back and work a couple hours a day. I work 80 in order not to work 40. Yeah. But I've delegated enough. I have enough people in certain positions to where my friend during a very busy work day, I'm capable of sitting with you an hour and doing a podcast while my company is running on autopilot and still producing. Yeah. And so those are the sort of things where you need to have faith in other people. Mm -hmm. You need to build up other people. And I believe that you need to surround yourself with people that are on the same vision and the same goals. And if you can find those sort of people, then my goodness, embrace them mm -hmm. and do whatever you can in order for them to feel comfortable working with you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You said 
uh, maybe a little selfish, but from my point of view, I don't think it's selfish at all to discover your path and to say, what, what is it over here is like, and go down that. I think it's courageous. And actually I would argue it's less selfish for you having done that because now you employ how many people and they help how many, 150 and all their families and all their people in their life that, that you impact, you know, and if you hadn't done that and you just said, Hey, and now I'm just going to do this thing over here. That's, that's David, totally I agree different. With you hundred percent, but I, I will say this with all due respect: if you can get yeah. past your parents' guilt, you mm -hmm. can live anywhere in the world. And and I love my family, and I love my friends, and they miss me terribly. I'm very far away. I, you know, I'm a five hour flight, and maybe I should have stayed in the United States, and I could have built something with my family's real estate company, which which is fine. And. Mm -hmm. But as I say before, I could have always clicked my heels and come home and taken it. But I chose totally. the difficult route. I, I chose to fail. I chose to try. Yeah. I, I, I chose to put myself out there. And little did I know, I succeeded. So that to me is what life is all about. You get 100 years here. You might as roll the dice a few times just to see if you could see how far you can go and how high you can fly. Yeah, Because so many times you're restricted or so many times people will say no and oh, David, it's because they don't K-N-O-W enough about your plan. Mm -hmm. And so maybe through patience, we can work through it and we can all find a way to, to meet in the middle. And that's kind of where I, I was coming from in the beginning. Yes. Yeah, totally. And a tremendous amount of, uh, I would say, courage. Thanks, go bro. to step out and do it. Yeah. Um, so something interesting that you you said towards the beginning is um, you started small, you yes. saved, and then you grew and you saved and you grew. And so was that always your idea? Because I know there's also this like startup mentality that a lot of people have. I'm going to create this thing and then I'm going to get all the funding for it. Maybe it's a really small percentage and then hopefully, you know, go big. But I did what you did. Same thing. Start small, save, grow. And I felt like in a lot of ways that mitigated so much risk and allowed for the success to happen and still enjoy life to some degree as you're growing this thing and not feel that like super huge weight that can come with like, oh, I just took out this huge loan and now I got to deliver. So was that your like idea and thought process behind that? Or does that just come naturally? I think that's a very logical question. I was given tons of advice from many different consultants, professionals down to just my best friends hanging out. How about this? The way that I was raised from my grandparents and even great grandparents that went through the depression and grew up during certain years, that's pretty much my family value. Mm -hmm. Grandma used to tell me, if you can't sleep at night because your rent or your mortgage is paid, then you have an issue. It's better just to pay for it in cash. So you mm -hmm. can sleep at night, uh, act your wage, you know? Right. And, and so these are things where as much as I'd like to impress you with certain things, there, there are certain sort of expenses I had or just my own peace of mind where I'd rather have either money in a bank and investment. I'd rather own the dirt than potentially give back the building to the bank, even mm -hmm. if it takes longer. And, and how about this? As I mentioned before about letting it ride, Maybe just the momentum of me and my own cash and my own savings and being conservative was the way. Mm -hmm. I'm super superstitious. Maybe I, I, I'm glad I didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. uh, could it have taken longer? No. In fact, it could have ended faster. Mm -hmm. Mind you this, I almost went out of business in 2010. Okay. I had all of my eggs in one basket and I lost my largest client. So I went down from like 89 seats down to like two. Mm. And instead of being a one trick pony, naturally I built my business back again, but I learned a huge lesson, A, not to put all your eggs in one basket, but B, but B, acorns for the winter. I weathered a storm mm. for about nine months. I was paying my top salaries to my supervisors to keep them on board, the rent, the building this is before I owned the building, but I figured I could have cut my losses, ended, enjoyed life or continued to fight for this thing. So those are the sort of moments where you take a walk by yourself, you look in the mirror, you ask yourself that true question, do I quit at 80% or do I go all the way? Are you willing to risk it? 
it's just money. It's mm -hmm. just time. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't willing to risk my own sort of self-respect. Mm -hmm. I came this far. I got to keep going. And if having a dip in your business during those dark moments, A, it shows character, but B, it kind of shows resilience. Mm -hmm. And instead of telling you about all my successes, why don't I tell you about the one time I almost literally got out of business yeah. and the fact that Richard didn't quit. Yeah. And so these are the sort of things, my friend, years later, where I, I can tell you these sort of stories because it just hasn't all been wine and roses and you and I make it look easy. But a lot of the entrepreneurs that are starting, David, they don't realize about the dedicated practice, the, the sacrifices to get your success. The times when the cameras are off or when you and I are communicating and writing scripts and practicing. So that's what it takes in order for you to be successful. You just can't snap your fingers. It's not going to be handed to you. Each one has to crack that code. And a lot of the times, David, it's with themselves. Do they really have the endurance to do it and to go the distance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, A, your grandma is super wise. <laughs> and so, you know, it's fortunate to have people like that in our lives who speak life. And, you know, this idea of being able to sleep at night with peace, knowing that you're doing your best and trying. And like, if you fail, you fail. But, you know, you're not you're not making choices that pull you out of alignment with who you are. Right. I think that might be one of the most important things we could do. Um, you know, I, cause I just can't think of something that, yeah, I just, I see so many people stressed out and really struggling. And, and I think that that's like hugely valuable and important. You don't think that shiny armor needs, uh, you know, a chink or two in it. I mean, yeah. that's what it's there for. If your boat just sits in port, then it's never seaworthy. I mean, you you have to get out there. You, I, I love the biographies because all your people that you love the most and your heroes, they have not say failed at one time, but they've tried to make it. One of the most famous things I love is, is Bono from U2. He posts that letter that he got where he got rejected for his music and they wished him well. Look at Bohemian Rhapsody. They were talking to Freddie and the gang about some of the songs that they didn't like, but obviously that's what made them legends. So sometimes people just don't see your vision mm -hmm. or sometimes they're envious of it. Or maybe as you say, being so positive, maybe they don't like positive people. Well, that's their issue. I like people that like me. I like water that seeks its own level. Maybe it's a bad first impression or I caught somebody on the wrong day. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. But if they're an energy sucker, if they're constantly negative and they're really not trying to win, it's best off just to take a step aside. A lot of the times it's with toxic friends or toxic parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll give you an example. It's always fun to I'm go just out. I was going to ask. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> go out and party and have a good time. But a lot of my agents that are still in school or in their early 20s, I don't want them coming in drunk, hungover, or just wasted. Mm -hmm. They have to realize that they have a responsibility. So if you can balance the two and have a beautiful work-life balance where you can still go to bed early, do your job, save money and be successful, you're going to win. Because mm -hmm. if you start coming into work that way, if your performance is lower, it, it, it kind of spirals out of control. You become in the spider's web mm -hmm. and things only get worse. And so I once again, try to tell these agents to splash some water on their face, have a little bit of coffee, take a break, because I know that they know that I know. And being the owner, I could fire them or write them up or something. We don't do things like that. I mean, if they're breaking labor laws, fine. But if some guy or girl needs a little bit of a on, a, on a Monday morning, just to wake themselves up or to get them going, my man, that's what we do as coaches. Mm -hmm. We've walked in those shoes. So we can completely put ourselves in that sort of position. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So in uh, you've scaled, you have a lot of employees. So what are some lessons that you've learned in that process of going from you to now hundred plus people? What an extremely intelligent question. Costa Rica has companies such as Amazon, HP, Intel, and Oracle. We are the most expensive in Central America, but we have the best infrastructure, no standing army, 95% literacy rate. And so a lot of the companies are gravitating towards here. 
In order to scale, I do compete against the big boys, which means one or two things. Either I have to match them in price, mm -hmm. or if you and I are going to grow, we might need to bring in the freshmen. Mm -hmm. Why is that an advantage for you and me, David? It's because we can mold them. They're not coming in with bad habits. They're walking in the door bilingual, which shows cognitive skills, structure, and discipline. They are excited, pen at the ready, ideas. It's not the most difficult job. It's just something you got to get used to with the CRM and the phone system. But anybody that has character, anybody that's got a personality will do very, very well. Mm -hmm. I let them know that fear is a more morbid anticipation of things that haven't happened yet. Mm. So we compare apples. What you're planning on doing for inbound customer support for movies and music is not as hard as you learning English. So why don't we compare the two? Mm -hmm. And secondly, I prepare them. So we reduce that fear. They're on a level playing field. And then finally, my friend, I, I encourage the thesaurus. So besides understanding the definition of a word, they learn similes. So they can expand their diplomatic vocabulary. They become a little more strategic. They don't use words like help. They use a sister guide and they won't say, excuse me, could you repeat that? They're more uh, diplomatic by saying, may I, uh, for my clarification, or may I make a suggestion? And so these are the sort of things that will decrease talk time, increase conversion ratios. They'll make more money because of commissions, but there's more satisfaction. We're, we're, we're not just plastic. We're paintings. We're not just going through the motions. We actually take our time to ask follow-up questions and, and a little more engaged on the phone. And by doing something like that, they can go home and tell their parents what they do for a living. They can be proud of what they do. And in this competitive industry where there's a ton of burnout and attrition, they're very delicate. So it's very, very important to give positive reinforcement to motivate them. I, I have a huge game room, David. So unlike other companies, I play pinball with my staff. So that's a place for us to hang out and chill, to let off steam, to recharge your batteries, to, to meet people from other departments. So the more that people can make friends, the more they can break bread with each other, the more they can play the games with their boss. You and I have created a certain culture that's different from most companies that just find their employees expendable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that's so important and so true. And I can imagine even, even more important with you competing with these larger companies. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned earlier talking about a work-life balance, and that's obviously something that I'm uh, super interested in. So what have you found for yourself um, in an effort to, to really create a business and a life that you love at the same time? It's very important to enjoy both. I spoke about a couple of my pastimes and this is what's important. You asked me about my energy earlier and, and yes, I'm an excitable kind of cat, but <laughs> I, I do wake up every day at 5.30 and I work out of my home gym. So I'm doing cardio, I'm doing weights. I hit a bag, a heavy bag and do some stomach. So that, that's my structure and discipline. That's, that's Richard time. That's me time. And if I'm in the gym, if I'm driving my convertible, if I'm playing pinball, what, what happens is my friend is there's a, a period of decompressed stimulation. So after about 20 to 25 minutes, my mind can start wandering. And what happens then is I can put things into perspective. Mm. I can understand my priorities. I can sleep on things and double check things and review things. And then it also reminds me that if I'm really enjoying my gym, my pinball, my convertible, what got me there? It got these work ethics. It got this sort of drive and grit to get here. And what the most important thing is that people do spend some time by themselves. Mm -hmm. So they are able to find their focus. I'm not talking about Mideastern meditation. Maybe you don't have the discipline for that, but there's nothing wrong for you taking a nice long walk or doing something where you put the phone away for a minute. You don't have people distracting you. And you just are allowing to find some sort of center. And that is imperative for me. If, if I don't have richer time, then I sometimes feel a little off that day. Mm -hmm. and, and so, as I say before, make your schedule, stick with it. You know, don't make excuses, especially during COVID. That's the time to really double down mm -hmm. and be true to yourself. 
And if you can start doing these sort of habits, especially like as the Navy SEALs say, where you make your bed, it's out of respect for yourself. And when you come home at night, your bed is made. And if you're starting your day by having a bed, you could flip a dime on and it bounces, you're winning. And I like that sort of thing. I like that sort of self-respect. I like where I'm half awake, I'm making a bed to wake myself up. And uh, these are the sort of steps you can take during a day just to have a beautiful day. And if you have one beautiful day, it could turn into weeks, months. And as you can see, my, my good friend, decades mm -hmm. of just being happy and enjoying your life. Nice. I love yeah. it. So, okay, cool. So one of the things that um, I hear people struggle with a lot is scheduling and, and priority. Sure. So, so for you, what have you found in an effort to create your life and your schedule? And what, are there any tools or things that you use that other people could also uh, learn from that and like, hey, this is how I figure out how to schedule and prioritize my life? Because a lot of people have a really hard time with that. It's okay. And, and it's because, well, gr gratefully, they're busy, which is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I believe in multitasking. And I believe mm -hmm. in time management, even though I might not be looking at somebody during a meeting, I could still be listening to them, listening to a phone call, but still, once again, doing some other work on the side, because I'm capable of, you know, chewing gum and walking at the same time. And uh, I think multitasking is good. I think schedules are very important. I think reminders are important. I also believe that making something tentative as an appointment, so you could have some wiggle room, because you're mentioning priorities, everything's important for you. But let's say hypothetically, you have a doctor's appointment or an attorney call, you might want to reschedule a call with your best friend a half an hour later. And so it's nothing personal, as long as you can touch base with somebody prior to that, and be very, uh, you know, surprises, people are more than willing to be flexible with you. And as I mentioned before, it's not like they're not a, a priority, but you could also explain that something did come up and thanking them very much for that. I also believe that delegation, you need to have people assist you. You can't carry everything. I have an SEO department. I have a human resources department. I have an IT department. I have security. I can't do it. I, could I? I could try, but I, I can't do it all on my own. And in order to grow... Take a step back doesn't mean you can't oversee it, but there's no reason why somebody could assist you in writing and following up emails and scheduling an appointment for you. Let's say worst case scenario, you're a one man or one woman shop and the phone's ringing off the hook. Sometimes you work with a call center to be an answering service for you. So it just doesn't go right into voicemail. Maybe instead of just sending out email templates to people, take an extra minute to make it custom made where you look up a LinkedIn or a company profile. So these are the sort of things that might be able to reduce the sort of time. So you don't need to do more research. If you have the flexibility with tentative appointments, then again, you're not locked into something. I think sometimes people need to get to the point in meetings. So that's why, you know, we could always <laughs> discuss certain sort of soft skill techniques in order to clarify things, reduce talk time, and to be able to get some more confirmations mm -hmm. with those with whom you're speaking. And, and so these are the sort of things where if you're in the now, David, and you're not thinking ahead because you're anxious in the past because you're depressed, you could almost really manipulate your now to maximize that time. You're telling people are stressed and they're worried. Yeah, it's because they're thinking ahead. But if everything is super planned out like camp, then just sit back and enjoy your, enjoy your day. <laughs> I mean, everything's planned out for you. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that can be done. And as much as it might seem like I have a lot of chaos here and the call center goes in all different directions, actually not, my friend. This thing is a well-run machine. The only thing I'm doing here is to walk the rows and, you know, and just give the positive reinforcement. I don't really even need to be here, but I like to be here. So I think those are the sort of initial structure skill sets that people could do in order to organize their time a little bit better. Yeah. Well, I think you, you said something that's, that's super important and often overlooked um, is the flexibility. Uh, of, of saying, this is my schedule, but there's flexibility with it. Cause 
I, I, cause I, there's one person that'll say, this feels like a prison to schedule. And there's somebody else that'll say, I feel like I, I have to respond all the time. But the reality is like, people are going to be okay if you call them back in five minutes instead of now or whatever, you know, it is, but we get these weird ideas in our head that, that has to be so rigid. And so, yeah, I love this, uh, just being super flexible. Yeah. But what happens if tomorrow doesn't even exist? So all this stuff doesn't even matter. Yeah. And you talk true. about priorities. Your priority is your beautiful family mm -hmm. and your best friends. As much as I want to earn your business, David, it's not the most important thing to me. The most important thing is my family. Yeah. And if yeah. something comes up with my mother or father or brother, I'm going to take the call. And I'm David, I might need to postpone this podcast, but my friend, I think you would understand. And by writing a yeah. very courteous email and explaining what happened, maybe that might make our relationship either better. You know, your best friends are made not from the best times. Your best friends are made from when the times when you skinned your knee or got beat up or something and they, and they walked you home. I mean, mm -hmm. if you and I could work through uh, rescheduling or something that came up on the podcast because bad audio video or something, that only makes us cooler. So I, I think that's an excellent chance just to show your business ethics and how you relate with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it. Okay, two more questions. We can wrap it up here. Uh, yeah. What makes you feel fully alive? The fact that I followed this dream, the fact that I learned a second language, married the girl of my dreams in Costa Rica, and we built a company together. But I sometimes have to stop and look around because this really shouldn't have happened. It's really a one in a million shot. There were so many different things that I did up to this point where it could have put me in a different direction where I could have taken the easy route and then just had things planned. But really what keeps me alive is the fact that I can see that I am assisting others. And when they have breakthroughs, David, when they crack a code or if they get to another level, I've paid it forward. There have been so many mentors and great people in my life that said, go Richard, go and put wind in my sails. And now that I'm in a certain financial and business position, instead of walking around like daddy war bucks, big bucks and playing big shot, it's made me even more humble. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm very proud of myself because I really have not changed in all of these years. Nice. I love it. Yeah, that's so cool. I, it seems to me that when it when it comes down to it, most people they have, we have our hobbies, we have our fun things. But the thing that we really makes us feel alive is that opportunity to pour into somebody else. So thank you for sharing. Um, okay, so where can people find out more information about you connect with you? Well, I think the first thing they should do, David, is buy a first class ticket and fly down to Costa Rica. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but if they want, they can give me a call. I, you know, no obligation. I'd love to hear what your scripts sound like. Uh, you can call me at 888-271-6750 or shoot me an email at CEO at Costa Rica's call center.com. But check this out. I have a Facebook fan page, close to 97,000 Ticos that are on this site. So if you're very interested to see the pulse of the Costa Rican call center industry or just see what's going on after hours, go check that out. And um, I can't thank you enough, David, for being a guest on your podcast. I love the work that you do. I told you earlier that it's really good that I could sit through your podcast and inspired me enough to write you. You were kind enough to have me on your show. And anything else to leave with your audience is to just 100% look in the mirror, look in your eyes, know what you need to do, be afraid, but still go for it really go for it. And I believe that a lot of your friends and your family want you to do this, but a lot of their advice is only to protect you. And so as long as you can sit down and you can talk about it and make your case very clear, then you have my support. And I just can't wait to see the success that your audience has. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Richard. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you for listening to Sacrifice to Success podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the show, please check out the link in the show notes and you can find all of the details there. If you got something out of this interview, would you please take a moment to share on social media? 
you can just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to somebody or post it on the socials. Let's see if we can change the narrative of social media and post valuable, positive content. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content, so to make sure you don't miss any episodes, please go ahead and subscribe. The thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show, and they mean a lot to me. If you'd like to know more, go to my website, davidweavercoach.com, or you can follow me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Those links are also in the show notes. And I do also have a free training on my website as well. So thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Thank you.